This is the Cosmic Voice. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Cosmic Voice. This is Season 6, Episode 15. I am here with my co-host, Chris Natalini. What's up, what's up, what's up? And I am Mick Michaels. Welcome back, everyone, to another show. Chris, another podcast, Episode 15. We are on the downhill cycle. It's crazy. Crazy that we're on the downhill of the season. That's it, right. We uh, are on the back nine, as they say. <laughs> it is. It's I don't even know out. if it's actually nine left, but it's almost <laughs> over. <laughs> it's crazy. It's uh, unbelievable how quick time is just going by. Even as today, as we record this, another show just dropped. I was like, oh, man, like already? Like I feel like we just delivered one the other day. And, and then, nope, week later, here it is. Boom, another one. That's what happens. That's what happens. Yep, yep. So what do you got going on, man? What's going on in your life? You know, we are in the thick of winter as we uh, record this, which um, is the worst. People, with the worst, and people cannot see you, and you are, you're wearing a hat and gloves in your studio. I'm freezing. So... Today, I don't... <laughs> It was supposed to be well, a warmer day. It was thin, it was bro. it was literally warm for maybe about fifteen minutes, and then all of a sudden it got cloudy. <laughs> Temperature started. It, they're just dropping, just like the back nine of this podcast. They're just dropping. When I saw your face, I thought, hmm, I wonder if did he just come out from shoveling snow or something? Like, what, what's going on over there? <laughs> no, well, me and my wife had this heat battle. You know what I mean? Oh, Go put a sweatshirt yeah, yeah. on thing, and it's like. Is she a naturally hot individual? Yeah, or yeah, she's, she's hot. Yeah, she's sweating. hot blooded, and I freeze all the time. You so, freeze. and you're and you're both pencil thin, so you know that's why. Oh, you yeah. need more meat on you. That's your I problem. do, I do, I do need more meat. That's what I compared to what we said a couple episodes ago. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> <Not> right. <eating. laughs> you know, we're in the thick of winter. Both bands are just kind of in this holding pattern, just writing and and recording and finishing up. We you know I got one band finishing up you know in the studio i got another band that's kind of working our way to the studio so it's uh you know it's gonna hopefully we'll i'll have two releases in 2024 which it's looking that way that's well so, that's that in itself is super exciting I mean, yeah 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 i am I, yeah i'm excited about that man i i am and uh so you know i'm just kind of again I, like i said i feel like i repeat myself every week but uh i'm just in this uh, uh creative holding pattern right now how about you what's going on with you um same thing i mean we're actually in the uh the post-production of our EP, we are doing reviews and mastering. That should be wrapped up by the end of the month. And then we're just gonna finalize some artwork and I think then we're just gonna put it in the production chain and, nice. and get this thing out there some way or another. We're just gonna let things, you know, see what happens. Cause last original release was our holiday song. Even though we've stopped promotion for the cover stuff that we did, we have some singles from that that are still charting here and there and still getting some rotation. So normally we jump right back into things. In the last episode, we talked about that we fell a little behind schedule because of certain things here and there, but would actually benefit us. So we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. I was even toying with, hey, you know, since these things are still kind of doing well, should we start all over again and re-release the first song that we released off it and see if anything gets picked up. I mean, why not? Just beat it, beat it, beat it, beat it down. That's funny. I mean, listen, if you remember back in the 80s, they would beat a song until it was just, there was nothing left to it. Listen, let's be honest. Listening to this show, I'm a Brett Michaels fan. He has released Every Rose Has Its Thorn at least 100 times. It's ridiculous. He releases it all the time, and I'm like, you know, with this person, with this person, and these friends, and solo, and acoustic, and band, and oh my god, stop. Well, Just that's, stop. That's, well, apparently it's working for him. <laughs> it, it's working for him, so, you know, it's, what's, you know what are you going to do? 
I get it. Listen, I mean, you milk it. In this business, I, I'm totally understanding it because, you know, when you're younger, you're going, why are they doing that? Why don't they? Because it's so much harder. Yeah, it right, really right. is, especially for right. these guys right. that have, you know, these legacy type careers. I totally get why they're doing it. I really yeah. do. I kind of understand yeah. it. I mean, it, it would be nice to see some new whatever, but the climate is so different. Your audience, even if you got a dedicated audience, they have no interest in new stuff. They really, they don't. really don't. They really don't. They really don't. You know, I mean, Kiss could release stuff off the board every week, and it could be the same set, but from a different... People would still buy it. You know, off the board, yeah. and here's another version of it. And But you put a brand new album out, nobody wants to hear it. Nobody wants and, you know, to hear it. And, you know, at the time we're recording this, too, I saw today that, you know, Billy Joel, after 17 years, like, he's going to release a song. And I was like, wow. I was a little thrown off by that. Now, I don't know the, the rest of the article. Of course, I just read the headline and get into it. So I don't know if it's like a just a musical composition or if it's like a legit song or if it's like an old song he's re-releasing. I don't know that. But he um, must have. Listen, this is a guy who he sits down and magic happens. Right. And that's my opinion. Oh, 100%. He must have archives and archives of things that he writes. I mean, I don't know when his last, how long did you say, 17 years? If I looked at that article correctly in my memory, I think it's like 17 years. You know, like on the Sirius XM, every couple months or whatever, they had that Billy Uh, Joel thing. And I listen, and I sit and I'm listening to it and I hear it. I love listening to him talk and tell stories and things like that. I keep saying to myself, you can't tell me this guy's not writing music. I can't see how a guy who comes up to a piano and he's talking to people, playing this piano, doing all this stuff. And he is so diverse in his musical language on the piano, like with yep. different composers. Yep. And, and I'm talking new and old stuff. And it's amazing. It's like, how does he not get himself to write? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I'm exactly. saying? Yeah. And it's yep. just amazing. Yep. Kept saying, when's some new stuff going to come? So it's funny that you said that. That was a couple months back. To me, that's exciting because there's a guy who every time he brought something out, you know, some people are still living off of Piano Man, but there was stuff that came out after that was just still quality yeah. stuff. So yeah, 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 yeah. And it's sad too because I am a new music lover. I, I like when bands put out new stuff, and you know, obviously there's certain genres of, of bands that still put out new stuff, but I think that predominantly most people are just into into older stuff, especially guys like Kiss's, uh, you know, a lot of Kiss's following and Billy Joel and, you know, those kind of retro. I mean, look at the Stones, though, right? Like, they put out a new record, and I, I, I'm not a Stones guy, but I, it's got great reviews. So, you know, but even when they come around, they're probably only going to play two songs off the new record because they, you know, that's, all, that's a lot of catalog to not play any of your hits. Oh, yeah. I mean, again, and touring at this stage for them, and same with Kiss, too. Think about it. It's the easy thing to do. Oh, yeah. Why would you not yeah. do it? Why would yes, you not okay. do what your audience, who has given you your career, if you're going to do that kind of tour, then let everybody know it before. Say, this is going to be the obscure hit tour, the, you know, yeah, the yeah, deep yeah, yeah. cuts tour. And you know what? People would still go. You know, here's the thing. Several months back, my band opened for Mike Tramp, Mike Tramp, former singer of White Lion back in the 80s. It was a pretty packed house, and it surprised our band and some other people that came to see us. We were like, wow, this is, you know. Halfway through his set, you quickly realize that some of these people hadn't been following his career <laughs> since leaving White Lion or White Lion breaking up. They were expecting, you know, the yeah. 80s Wait. version. Yeah. yeah. And now he did all those songs, but he did them as an adult contemporary now. Right, right, right. And people are like, what is he doing? I'm like, well, that's Wait. Or that's this song, or you know, whatever. And uh, people are like, oh, "I don't, I don't get it," you know, that kind of thing. So, like, you know what I mean? But that's where people are. And I think even newer fans that get introduced to that music fall into the the rut of you get locked into that error, and then you don't want to hear anything else either. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Be- because yeah. it's like part of it is, I think, is just like we're almost brainwashed. Yes. Yeah. You know what I mean? When the children yeah. cry, wait, you know, little fighter, yeah. Yeah. nothing yeah. else exists. You know, that kind of thing. <laughs> Listen, breaking the law, right? With Judas Priest. <laughs> I mean, you know, if that's not part of the repertoire, I don't know what is. Another thing coming. I mean, these are 
monumental songs. Listen, are they the greatest songs in the world? Probably not. I mean, there's probably songs that are better. But emotionally, we're so attached to those songs, especially as Judas Priest fans, longtime Judas Priest fans, we wouldn't know the difference anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I think that's it, right? Like, I think that most people that don't really care about bands' new music is mostly because they're just trying to relive some memory. Uh, you know, especially a band like Kiss, where, you know, guys are now fathers, mothers, wives, whatever. Grandfathers. Taking their, grand, yeah, like they're taking their kids, so they want their kids to experience the excitement of Strutter, you know, War Machine, and you don't want to, I don't want to say waste your time because that's not right. They don't care about the new stuff. They want to experience, they want their kids to experience the same feelings they experienced when these songs came out. Oh, I agree. When my kids, who are now adults, had gotten up to a certain age, I started taking them to see Kiss. I think both of them enjoyed it, but I even now, I don't know if they experienced the same thing that I experienced. And right, right, being that, right. like, now I have an older brother who introduced me to Kiss, and I'm not sure that my experience, well, it's probably not, everybody has their own, but he yeah. experienced it in a way that I didn't get a chance to Right. You know what I'm saying? And it yeah, just yeah, happens yeah. that way. Yep. So yeah. when you introduce something to somebody else like that next generation, you are trying to relay that excitement and that newness, that freshness. Yes. And, you yep. know, it's just something about it. You know, I've said this before. I've told you a thousand times. I could listen to Detroit Rock City on constant rotation, maybe right. throw in Strutter every four or five plays. But <laughs> I could hear it over and over and over again. There's just something about that song that just... It gets me every time. I don't understand what it is. I don't understand what it is, but it's that thing. And I guess that's what, whatever it is that connects people. And that's what we were talking about in a couple episodes last season too, about like that emotional content that's in the music that you write yeah, and how that attaches itself to your audience, your listener. And that's why people say, you know, music is the soundtrack of your life. I know that sounds corny, right. but think about it. Every True. Something happens and you relate it to a song. 100%. I hear 100%. I hear an 80s tune and I'm brought back to a particular memory, particular yeah. time, yeah. something. Yeah. I can't remember my name half the time, <laughs> but a song will take me back. Yeah. What's my phone number? You got, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Everybody's phone's in my... I just... You go by name. I can't, I can't tell you what the phone number is. I totally agree. So, no, I, I agree, man. That's absolutely true, bro. That is absolutely the truth. Yeah, it's crazy. But, you know, more power to Brett Michaels. Yeah, you ain't kidding. But, hey, you listen, I kidding. guess I would do it, too. Why not? Why not? I guess. <laughs> hey, listen, if it's working, you know what I mean? And someone goes, listen, how are we making on them bills? Well, a little light. Looks like every rose as its thorns getting a thrash <laughs> version. <laughs> Don't give away any ideas, all right? I may be working on something. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Plenty of ideas from this show, let me tell you. Plenty of what not to do. That's right. That's right. It's Ross the Boss. Take it down. This is Stephen Pearson from Rat, the Rat Bastard. You're listening to the Cosmic Voice. All right. Well, then let's get to the topic of the show. And the topic of this show is same old song and dance. Does it all sound the same? Does it all sound the same anymore? Is it the same old, same old with music? A lot of critics say that everything that's been done in music is done. And everybody is just, they're rehashing everything. They're trying to reinvent the wheel, but they're really not doing anything about it. That's one of the arguments early on about, you know, rock is dead because nobody's original anymore. Greta Von Fleet, when they first hit the scene, oh, it's the new Led Zeppelin and this, you know, they said that about Kingdom Come. Yeah, they said it about Kingdom Come. Guns N' Roses come out. They say it's the new Aerosmith. Back then, if people remember that, they quickly wiped that out, that they were way yeah, different than yeah. Aerosmith. There was a study done a couple years ago by a university, and they did this scanning of, you know, the most popular music of the time, you know, the top 10, top 20, so on and so forth. And they found that there was a relative consistency to all the music sounding very similar, similar beats, 
similar EQ settings, the same instrumentation, what they were using, things of that nature. I'm just throwing some stuff out there. So there is some of that. And you hear a lot of people go, boy, that sounds like so-and-so. That sounds like so-and-so. Is that us just relating or does it really sound like something? You know, as human beings, we have a tendency to pick faces out of anything. Our mind works that way. People see clouds. Oh, I see faces. You see smoke. You see faces. You could throw some paint on the ground. And somebody goes, oh, I see a face. Our minds are wired that way. Are our ears wired that way as well? Chris, Professor Natalini, please let us know what you think. I think first, if you go back to anybody, to any artist, anybody that's creative, you're going to take something from the people that you enjoy, are inspired by, or grew up listening to or watching. It's just natural. You're just going to. When you love something so much and it has become a part of you and it inspires you, there's always going to be something that sounds like, looks like, reflects as could be considered like it all kind of comes together it's just how it is there have been times in our lives especially you and i through music that we've had these people these artists come out and really kind of change things you know nirvana comes to mind you know they change the scene corn was another one that that stands out to me that was different slipknot uh you know when they came out they were different but you could always sit down and go well yeah like they came out they were different go they were doing something different at the time but you ask those guys and they'll tell you we took this from so and so right you want to talk about you know, again here we go yes you know paul Stanley's book he talks a lot about how he took certain lyrics or certain melodies from songs that he was inspired by beatles rick springfield does the same thing a lot of his he'll tell you like a lot of his stuff is you know, 4-4 four, four, like the Beatles. We talked about, I think it was just in a, a recent podcast that we did this season. I, I mentioned about Dave Grohl and, well, you know, I saw him in this interview and he said he ripped off all his drum beats from old disco beats and, you know, people that he listened to growing up. So I think that it's a natural thing that everybody that is creative, that creates, you're going to take something from somebody or something that you enjoy, love, or inspired by. I think it's just natural. It would just be like, something from a family member or a parent or parents you're going to take something from them because that's what you grew up on how many times have especially you and i were of the age where we go my god i sound like my dad or my mom or like whatever like there are definitely times where i go my god i sound like my mother like <laughs> it's just it's just natural it's just how it is because that's what we grew up on and that's what we were surrounded by Musically, I know there's many things that I have taken from people that I've been inspired by and have learned by and just comes out. And, and I tell you what, I don't shy away from it. I don't really care. It doesn't bother me if someone says, ah, oh, you sound like whomever. And I go, well, that's awesome because I was inspired by this person or that band or whatever. I think back to there was a time in the 80s, and I'm only going to refer to the 80s because that's when our musical minds were being molded you know when cinderella hit you know all the labels were looking for the next cinderella right so they were signing everybody that sounded like cinderella same thing poison hit everybody was getting signed at selling poison same thing so i definitely remember a time back in the day where labels were only signing bands that sounded like the next big thing I don't necessarily know if it happens like that nowadays because we have so many different forms of music. I mean, I'm sure that there's, I guess, I guess like a lot of your pop stuff too. So you can look at rap music and pop music. They're just sampling stuff that was popular back X amount of years ago. So they're just reusing something that sounded like something else. It's what they do. I think there's always that thing that's going to happen that everything is going to kind of circle back. So, I mean, history, right? Repeats itself. That's what they say and everything just kind of comes back so something that isn't popular now 10 years from now is going to be popular again you know all the 80s new wave bands uh you know they made a resurgence a number of years ago that everybody started coming out doing 80s new wave just kind of you know a little more up to date garth brooks right like he kind of matched country and rock now that's all there is now now it's just country rock or country pop everything just kind of is inspired by something else and uh I think, unfortunately, with that, I think a lot of it does sound the same. When I hear things, I go, oh, like it just sounds, and I, you know, and I hate to sound like, again, like I hate to sound like my parents, but I go, it just, it all sounds the same to me. And I could even say there's been times where I've gone to like death metal shows and, you know, say six or seven bands are all death metal, they're all the same bill. And by the fifth band, I'm going, 
I don't see like there's all there's nothing there's no distinction right there's no as talented as everybody may be as good as all the bands are there's no distinction so I don't necessarily know if we're going to ever see in our lifetime someone that's going to do something different in terms of recreating something from new I think everything is going to kind of vibe from something else I don't know if we'll ever see in our lifetime something new and I'm not saying we haven't maybe we just haven't heard it yet here's two things one Going on that something new, we're hopeful that something new comes. But is it something new that's going to just change everything and make such an impact across the board to everyone, regardless of their like or interest? Case in point, certain artists throughout history made massive waves throughout the entire industry. Beatles, Elvis, Sinatra, Michael Jackson... You know, you could pick a couple other people throughout the line. Right. Are we ever going to see somebody, someone like that? I mean, there's so many artists. When the ball dropped and I'm watching the artist, I didn't even know who some of those people were. Yeah, yeah. They're award-winning, mega-selling. Now, again, that could be an age thing, but when Michael Jackson was big, my grandparents knew who he was. Yep. You know, people knew who Elvis was, like whether you liked him or you didn't like him, because right. he was making waves across the board for everybody. Yeah. The yeah. other thing is, I totally get about inspiration, right? Having your favorite artists and how they inspire you. You know, maybe you're covering their songs or you're learning how to play like they did or, you know, you're using their records to be your instructor. So there may be some similar sounding stuff and stuff like that that's one thing but what about is there a conscious effort to craft songs to mold songs to make songs not even create songs make songs that are genuinely designed to sound like another artist or group of artists strictly for the sake of numbers streaming selling records if people still buy records i guess it's all about stream numbers now because i think that a lot of the argument that people may have and not realize it is that they're arguing like you were saying they're trying to figure out well you know we've all inspired any good craftsman has been inspired by the craftsmen that came before yeah I mean, whether yeah, you're true, a yeah. painter whether right, you're right, a furniture right. maker sculptor yes. musician whatever i get that that's kind of, well, that's the power of the arts, right? The humanities yeah. in it. Yeah. But then there's the effort to basically plagiarize without plagiarizing, if that makes sense. Yeah. Ripping yeah. off and trying to avoid getting that ripping off <laughs> feel. That's what I'm saying. Like, is the argument, they're not sure of the difference? Like, are they arguing one thing? Oh, there's no good bands. Rock is dead. But really what they may be saying is, hey, man, everybody's just trying to cash cow in here and they're just spending more time trying to sound like so-and-so, do it like this and that, than to take those inspirations and take them one step further. Well, here's the thing, right? We said that at the time when Guns N' Roses came out, they were the new Aerosmith. Okay, maybe they kind of were because they would have been inspired by Aerosmith 10 years, 12 years prior. But then they took it someplace else completely. Yeah. 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 Do you see what I mean? And yeah. like, if you take bands like the Queen, Def Leppard, at that era from, say, 75 to 85 of that British wave of the heavier bands, those harmonies that those bands did, that was all inspired by the suite. Right. 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 Um, you know, Pete Way inspired more bass players, not only with playing style, but with pants. <laughs> Do you see what I mean? But when you give credit, yeah. like, you know, and all those guys would give credit to whoever, hey, listen, I was inspired by such and such. But you don't hear that sometimes in pop music. N uh, no, no, no. I think everybody's probably a culprit of it at some stage. And, you know, just because the bands don't talk about it they keep pushing it off to pop oh pop's ripping themselves off you know because it's all crafted it's all crafted it's all produced it's this that and the other thing are people the critics actually confusing the argument what do you think oh man mm. 
I know that was a long I, way around that question. Yeah, but. I don't, I don't know, man. But you know what? I like that theory, bro. I do. I, I, I like what you're saying because I still hear music that, like, hey, that's a great groove. Hear that in the pocket punch. It's got this. It's got that. Yeah, it sounds like sometimes predictability is kind of cool. There's nothing wrong with it. No, 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 no. But then there's that same old, same old that just kind of flatlines. It's good. It's solid. It's well produced. Great players, whatever. Like we were talking about early on in this episode, it may not have that emotional content to really grab. Sometimes you'll hear a whole album. I'll still listen to the whole album. I'll go through it. There is only maybe one song that really super grabs you. And the other ones are like, "Eh, you know, whatever. Uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm sure that all these artists, all these bands were putting their best foot forward. And I'm not saying that it's any less than. I definitely gravitate towards how does that song grab me emotionally? Do I get a certain... I have found that if I get angry... I don't want to hear the song. I'm angry enough. I spent years nonstop anger. I don't need a song to make me angry. I got plenty of my right, own I can right, listen to right, right. and go, you know what? That just I got my me. own thoughts. Yeah, I got my own thoughts. <laughs> even if a song moves me in a way where I feel as though, even if I feel a sadness or a, a loss, in addition to a song that I get excited and I get pumped up and I get encouraged inspired do they still exist i think those songs still exist and i think that artists are still doing it do they sometimes fall into the category it's like well they either fall short of it or it winds up sounding like something else yeah we're all guilty of that but then there's the flip side i think that there is a conscious effort in the industry to replicate and duplicate what's already been done 50 more times in that same season It's about the streams, because at the end of the day, I don't truly believe the industry has any love, care, desire about the creativity of the artist and what they have to say in the expression. It all comes down to the money. These guys that are actually building songs in their little bedroom suites, recording suites, they're just looking to cash in on something. I get it. Listen, if you could do it, you do it, I guess. But I think that what's happening is it's that ripple effect that trickle down effect that all artists all bands are getting the backlash for it and that's not necessarily the case you and i case in point i know that we constantly work on our stuff i've said it before i'm not trying to reinvent the wheel but i'm trying to be true to what sounds good for me and if that has some of my influences in it hey fantastic because when someone goes hey you guys sound like judas priest or i've heard stuff that hey you guys sound like zz top uh Okay, cool. I mean, I don't see it because I didn't really follow them. But man, that's better than saying, man, you guys sound like a pile of horse manure in the summertime. Right. And even that, I guess some people would get excited about. Hey, at least I, I sound like something. <laughs> I sound like something. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. That's a tough debate. But like we talked about earlier, statistically, there was a Spanish university that did a study a couple years ago that said that, you know, when they did all the tests... The sonic testing and looking at the data in terms of how the recording's done, how producing, how EQ, what sounds they're using. They have to have this instrument and this instrument to create this type of... Well, yeah, that's definitely happening, especially if you're looking at the top 10, top 50 type of pop songs. But we also talked about in episodes, and I think we talked about it last year, that even in the metal community, a certain drum sound is used, bass drum sound is used. They have a certain technique because they want to keep things sounding the same. Studios right. were always known for, they have that particular sound, that's why people went to them. Yes. Right? Yes. But yeah, yeah. it's become now the genre itself has a standard. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you even talked about that as well. It yeah. definitely has standard. If you're playing real drums, but then they're being replaced in the final recording, which is a common thing, especially in the mm-hmm. digital age, Pro Tools and stuff, everything's going to wind up being triggered or replaced. Well, now you, hey, I want that sound that so-and-so used. Okay, and, you know, same, you know, whatever. So there's some of that there, too. That's not necessarily the artist trying to write, like, or do something in terms of the music creation, but music production is something different. It could also be a lot of these stars or a lot of these up-and-coming stars are surrounded by these people that go, listen, it worked for them. 
so you're going to do it. Or you had a smash hit, you're going to recreate that hit. Right. You know what I mean? Like if you, And if you're young and up and coming and have all these yes people around you, then they're going to talk you into recreating something that worked somewhere else. And that was another issue with the 80s and even the Seattle scene. It got so oversaturated because everybody was going, listen, it worked for them, it worked for them, we're going to do it too, we're going to do it too, we're going to find this man. And then that's it. I also get to hear a lot of guys in my work listen to what is no longer, to me, in my opinion, isn't really great hip-hop anymore because it's not hip-hop. It's it's just not great at all. Even words don't make sense. My point is that all these beats that are being created sound the same, just different lyrics to it. They're recreating the same thing because it's just noises that they're just kind of recreating notes, right? They're just lining them up and then they're just rapping over it. And a lot of that stuff, a lot of the popular, if you want to call it hip hop, a lot of the hip hop that's out there today really, really sounds the same. And I think that has a lot to do with it worked for them. We're going to recreate it. We're going to do it too. Well, I get that because, I mean, even in the 80s, you know, our era, they had a particular bass sound that was used, that yep. high reverb snare. Yep. There were yep. certain, you know, I mean, like when the Sonic drums sound became, you know, the Simmons sound back then, that became popular. So, you know, I get it. I totally get it. I understand that because now you're talking about an era of music that you're trying to fit into the mold, which, again, those instruments that I mentioned for the 80s, was part of that 80s sound. That right. certain type yeah. of guitar sound yeah. and, you know, the whole thing. Totally get it. Totally yep. get it. You are listening to The Cosmic Voice with your hosts, Chris Natalini and Mick Michaels. But again, is that an artist's decision, like you were saying, or is that a production decision... See, because here's the thing. The music that everybody's critiquing and arguing about and complaining about is only the mainstream music. They're not talking about most of the indie in the trench arts because we're in the millions. There's tons of music out there that people aren't hearing. They can't say that no one's not doing any original sounding type of material. How could you if you haven't heard it? Right. Right, right. So the argument, is it the same old, same old? Yeah, the mainstream is. It's always been like that. They've always had their clone rangers. They had Elvis clone rangers. I remember when Madonna came out, there was like three or four people that came out with singles that did a whole Madonna thing. Michael Jackson. Yeah. You know, so on and so forth. It's unbelievable. I mean, everybody does it. I get it because, like you said, that record company, those producers, they go on the hunt to find that sound then you're oversaturated. Like by yeah. the end of the 80s, early 90s, you had all those hair metal type bands. Everybody was just being picked up. Hey, if you looked good, if you had this hair, you had a certain attitude. Yeah, yeah. Because half of those yeah. guys weren't even metal anymore. I mean, no. if, you th- if you go yeah. back now, they weren't metal bands. Not no, in the sense weren't. of like Grim they, Reaper and Metal no, Church. and no. You know, nope. they weren't metal bands. They were nope. harder rock bands that probably looked better than they, than they truly sounded. <laughs> well, listen, I can name about 10 of them that actually tracks that statement. <laughs> right. Well, listen, I'm just saying. So then it's nothing new in the industry, is it? It's nothing new in the industry. But I it's don't not, believe no. it's the artist's fault. All those guys that were being signed, would have you said no? I guess some of them may have said no. But at the time, nobody would say no. You want us to do this? Yeah, okay, sure, why not? You want us to do yeah. that? Sure. Okay, why not? Half of these guys that were brought in and signed, some of them didn't even appear on their own albums. They had studio yeah. guys. Yeah. Warrant. Studio guys. They had other guitar players yeah. on that first album. I mean, even Ace Frehley. Yeah. Right? He was replaced in their heyday. Tons of stuff that's going on and on. Because to some degree, I guess it's not your industry after a certain level. It's somebody else, the people that are pulling the puppet strings or that are writing the checks. But I think that the argument is valid. I think it's misdirected. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, that's a good one. That's my take on it. I mean, you can even look at shows. Let's just throw it out there, like American Idol. I don't even know if it's still in the air. But, like, you know, if one of those judges gets somebody and that person wins, then that person has now become their producer. Well, guess what? 
the person's going to sound like everything they produced before that. I think it's both. I think it sometimes, I, well, I think it's definitely industry related. And then there are some artists that probably do that too because they, they get that contract on their hand and this is what they've always wanted to do. And, and if this is what I got to do to do it, then yeah, I'm going to do it. You know, you bring up a great point. If you remember, we did an episode on do you really need a producer? And one of my arguments was, and I understand, listen, some of these producers are really super creative. They have these ideas. But what happens is, is a lot of the bands that they produce wind up all kind of sounding similar. And then yes. those bands, when they go out on their own, they never get a hit again. They right. never make the same impact. So yes. is it the band or is it just the producer creating exactly what they have in their head and the band that they're working with at that time is just their vehicle to get this out sure yeah. the talent is there well for some i guess if they're not being replaced but you know we've read <laughs> tons of stories where these producers will yeah. pull an artist yeah yep i mean yep. for the dynasty album they brought in Vinny ponzi or whatever his name is just yeah. to appease yep. peter chris and he, Vinny goes yeah. hey peter you can't do this you're out we're bringing in anton fig you know what I mean? So like a guy you thought was on your side wasn't. But my point is those artists never seem to be able to recapture what they accomplished while working with that producer. So is it the producer yeah. or is it the band? Because the producer goes on and makes hits with somebody else. The band that they left doesn't. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, a thousand percent. That would, I, and that's just that would just be like if an artist goes, "Hey, that producer wrote that song or helped get that song big." Ah, it's a producer I want to hire for my next record. Right. I mean, because look, after Mutt Lang finished his tenure with Def Leppard, he went on to Shania Twain. She just exploded. Right. right. And then what happened with Def Leppard? Right. Listen, they've been able to maintain their status. Don't get me wrong, but there has yeah. never been another pour some sugar on me. Right. You Rick Rubin, same thing. Yeah. Same thing. Rick Rubin, yeah. It's a crazy thing. Crazy thing. It is. It is. You know, again, I, I think that, you know, there's so many creative, talented people out there. And, and you know, I mean, even some of the best people take something from somebody else. It's just how it well, is. Oh, yeah. You can't not do that. Again, I guess if you spent most of your formative years in crafting your style your sound your abilities copying other players well it's it's inevitable isn't it and it is yeah every so, artist yeah. has their favorite artist some are popular some are not yeah. but somewhere down the line that affected them that it comes through in their playing in their delivery listen like you said earlier paul stanley he has admitted that he tried to do songs like another song that he heard oh yeah like i mean yeah. to me that's going out and setting it up to almost follow the pattern that was already yeah. put out there but then you do it yep. in your style i guess they do that too like there's a lot of that hey i want to write a song like this well okay you would hope that at to some degree it doesn't sound exactly like it <laughs> but it has a feel or something like that i mean there is an exercise that they use in some music programs where they say, take your favorite song and rewrite it. Take the chords, oh. play them differently, change the arrangement, something like that. Because, I mean, again, it's not about plagiarism or copyright infringement. The exercise is to expand your perspective. But how many people are actually doing that as part of their, as part of their mainstay of their career? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I'm not pointing fingers at anybody, but listen, it's the truth of the matter. Yes. Yeah. You know, 100 percent, man. That is absolutely true. That is absolutely true. So it, listen, it, it, if, you uh, know, for the guys and gals and bands and artists that are not necessarily mainstream, they're in the in the trench and they feel that this topic doesn't pertain to them. Well, maybe it doesn't. But at the same time, it does cause you to look at your music in a way that says how much of my influences are coming through. And see, that's the beauty about us being artists is that we've been, just like with anybody, it's not like we spend our whole lives listening to only one artist and nothing else. We have this palette of artists, so, and every palette's different. So that combination's gonna be different. And if you put them all together, guess what? It becomes unique. Yeah. 
It yeah. becomes, yeah, it sounds a little like this, sounds a little like that, sounds a little like that. But then it's your way, your interpretation. And I think that's what makes things exciting for the type of artists that we are, as opposed to, we're not manufactured artists. We can be inspired. We have to be inspired. If we're not inspired by someone, something, then we're not really, there's not much substance to what we're doing, is there? Especially right. as artists. Right now. Right, right, yeah. But we're not manufactured. We're not a boy band. A producer hasn't brought us in, says, if you play this, play this, play this, play this, you got yourself a hit because five yeah. other people wrote it. And we know right. because they wrote the other top five <laughs> songs in the Billboard Top 10. You're yeah. guaranteed to make six, seven, eight until the other ones burn out. Again, I'm going to go back to saying I think that the argument is valid. I just think it's misplaced. They're pointing it in the wrong direction. It's yeah, not the I artist. I agree with I that. think they no. need to push it to the industry more. You would oh, think that nothing. the artist would drive the industry, but at the end of the day, you know how that goes. Everything is led by money, right? Yep. The industry leads, drives the artist to make these decisions. Good, bad, yeah. and indifferent, and sometimes just downright ugly. Ugly. <laughs> I don't know, brother. What do you think? You got anything else you want to add to that? And, nope. you know, I nope. guess we'd be the first ones to sign up for that contract. <laughs> I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> Look at these bozos. 40 years and they still can't get a hit. I'll do it. I'll do it. Who do you want me to sound like? Sounds good. Sounds good. Sign me up. It. Sign me up. <laughs> if you like that episode, check out some of our other episodes at www.thecosmicvoice.com. Step into the cosmic verse and fill that void. And be sure to visit the website and get your cosmic comic panels. Thanks so much for listening. This is the Cosmic Voice. Be sure to check us out at thecosmicvoice.com. Like and follow us on Facebook at The Cosmic Voice. You can find The Cosmic Voice everywhere you listen to online podcasts like Deezer, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor, Stitcher, and so many more. All right, folks, that's going to do it for us. If you're hearing this message, you've listened to the entire episode. And for that, Mick and I would like to thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And we hope you enjoyed this new episode. And if you did, please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Also, feel free to let us know what topics you'd like to see covered in future episodes of The Cosmic Voice. And you can get in touch with us through thecosmicvoice.com and, of course, all of the Cosmic Voice social medias. Take care and be safe. You're listening to The Cosmic Voice. Music, talk, and nothing but business.